Okay guys, I've kind of left you behind. I was just trying to get some work done before I had to go out of town. You know, a lot of yada yada excuses are easy to come up with. But what I wanted to talk to you about was when you're reducing your uh, valve guide boss in your exhaust port. Now if you remember, I'm going to try not to tap this head a million times because I noticed that in one of my previous videos and I absolutely hated it. But when you first start working your valve guide boss on your exhaust port, first thing you want to do is find a burr that you are comfortable with that you can basically remove that bulbous material around the top of the guide to even it to the guide material. Okay, just think about coming from this top part of your valve guide, <clears throat> sorry, and making it a flat surface into the material that's available to this point. Sorry, there's that stupid noise I don't like. I had a wooden pointer that I was going to use, and of course I can't find it when I need it because the wood doesn't make that stupid tapping noise. But if you'll just think about this, remove that outer bulbous area that's going to be their factory, bring it down to match the material that's here. So what you're what I'm what I'm trying to get through to you is do this slowly. You'll always learn more. You're going to develop your own technique, style, burrs you like to use, and you know get everything worked out to your best abilities. The main thing I wanted to bring up about your valve guide boss is don't cut it overly thin. Okay? Like I see a lot of people get really aggressive with trying to reduce these areas on each side down really far. I don't choose to do that and here's why. If this head ever has to have new guides installed if you have cut this, you know, too thin, you stand a crack, a really high chance of cracking this boss when they press in the new valve guides. So I just wanted to kind of throw out to you that what you're looking at is this back wall. Think of air coming down. It's going to hit the valve stem and the natural rounded shape of the valve stem is going to direct the air to each side. So all you're really trying to do is just remove material on each side of that rounded surface to promote airflow. Think about it. Coming down, it hits the valve stem. It's going to turn left or right. So this little area on the sides are where you're going to gain your flow and without hurting the structural integrity of the valve guide boss itself. Now, if you think of an airplane wing, uh, if you look at an airplane wing, specifically the front half of it, it's not a sharp or small uh, radius. Like you see a lot of people, and you'll, you'll notice it more when we talk about the intake uh, valve guide boss, where you'll see them overly cutting this aluminum uh, guide boss try they think they're helping their airflow like on the intake side the air is coming the opposite direction so they tend to try to make this area of that guide boss like I don't want to say an edge but a much smaller tighter radius that they think is cutting the incoming air and somehow promoting airflow but if you look at the airflow dynamics, specifically from the, like looking at an airplane wing, you actually gain more airflow by just having a slightly wider, like imagine your valve guide uh, itself, that's as tight of a turn as you need is that radius or that half circle because it actually promotes uh, oh, like a better velocity without interruption than trying to split it. I hope that makes sense. But when you start trying to split the incoming air, it can actually be detrimental to port flow over a, a more gentle uh, surface that it has to go around, similar to the front of an airplane wing that builds velocity and actually creates lift 
as it comes around that wider front towards the back half, if that makes any sense. So when you see um, aftermarket intake bowls, and forgive me, we're on this side of the head, but like in this one that's dark, you'll see a tail. You'll see they cast in and promote a tail right behind the guide on the intake side because they're using this shape the air's coming around, it's like speeding up. Sorry about that tapping, I hate that too. But the air's coming around the guide, then it's going, it's like an acceleration to lift, hitting that tail and then climbing into the cylinder. But we're not talking about that right now and I apologize for getting off track. But on this exhaust side, just think of that air coming down, hitting the valve stem and going around it. Okay, so don't go cutting deep or doing anything dumb down in here. Just make that path on either side as the least amount of restriction as you can. And something that I think I've mentioned before, but I like to mention in every video about these porting theories, don't dig behind the guide. I see a lot of porters dig back here to... Um, I'm gonna say possibly to like make the the volume of the port larger, but if you think about it logically, you don't want your air to have to go down and turn. You want to try to make that as smooth of a transition as you can from the bottom of your valve seat and your bowl cut. That it's gonna follow this wall and keep as much velocity as it can without you know undue turning by digging in this area. Generally, I only clean this back wall up enough to you know, seamlessly blend my bowl cut and to kind of clean up some of these ugly GM uh, casting lines and undercuts that they put in there when they're machining the head to install the seats. But I wanted to share this part four where I you know, was working down these exhaust guides and starting to get a little bit of final port texture because I did hit these with the sanding rolls a little bit just to kind of see where I was at then you know of course every time when you start doing your finishing texture and sanding and all that you'll see things that you might want to trim out a little bit better get a little bit better uh, transition etc etc so anyway I just wanted to make a video because I hadn't put up part four of the uh, porting process yet um, I am going to try to knock these heads out because I've got some more work i got to get started on. But, you know, I just wanted to try to share that little bit of logic and theory as to how you shape and reduce your uh, exhaust valve guide boss and how to transition it into your back wall without, you know, digging in areas that you don't need to dig in because you're not going to gain anything. And if you got totally crazy and dug too far, you poke a hole into the water jacket, so... Anyway, hopefully you guys are still following this uh, porting tutorial because, you know, it's new to me to try to do this step by step, kind of share why I do it the way I do, the theories behind it, and I don't know, try to help you guys out as much as possible because in the end, you know, you don't have to be rich to go fast, but sometimes you got to do put in a little bit of sweat equity so you can learn how to port these heads, flow more air, and get some more horsepower so anyway appreciate you guys watching hopefully you'll like subscribe share hit the little belly thing uh you know try to get some views up i'd like to get a few more subscribers um six thousand sounds good you know so anyway thanks again for watching have a good one part five will be coming up soon